Hi there, I'm Scott, and this is Great Scott Knitting, a vlog, podcast, thingy, whatever we want to call it. Welcome to episode 16. Um, if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for continuing to come back and watch what I'm up to. And for those of you who are new to this podcast, this vlog, this thingy, welcome. I hope you enjoy what you find here. Today is February 6th, 2021, and here in Wichita, Kansas, it is a very, very chilly 21 degrees. Burr. And as that says, yeah, it's cold. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so it's been a couple weeks since I... Um, last produced a podcast vloggy thingy um i didn't didn't upload anything last week because my um yeah just didn't feel like it um actually some uh good news on many fronts has occurred over the past couple weeks um i do finally have a new job um i don't start yet I don't start till later on this month but i have signed on the dotted line paperwork saying i'm going to go to work for you and you're going to pay me this much money so for those of you who um sent out positive thoughts prayed had well wishes uh you know whatever voodoo you did um it seems to have worked um so thank you very much it is not the job that i thought i might be getting so but you know i'm not going to complain it is employment after um 11 months of being unemployed 11 month 11 and a half months technically by the time i start and my first paycheck will come um, a year to the date that I was laid off. So, fun. Um, so, that being said, um, we, we thank the maker for good things. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, yay. Um, other than that, we have a polar vortex. Uh, bearing down on us and so um yeah for the next few days it's actually for about for the next week week and a half it's not going to get above 30 degrees here in wichita so um it's going to be cold and it's going to be cold for a long time especially for wichita because we usually don't have these types of temperatures here um so that being said let's talk about knitting things that keep us warm. Um, all right, we're going to start off with some finished objects. Um, let's see. Um, I have no finished objects. Uh, okay, I take that back. I have a half finished object. I have a half of a sock or a pair of socks knit up. So um, I finished knitting this um, three or four days ago, and I have the other one uh, well along its way of being done. This is um, 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend in a colorway that I dyed up myself. It is a very autumn colorway with lots of oranges and yellows and browns and reds. So um, I really loved dyeing the skein of yarn, and I really, really love how it knit up. It's pooled in a very interesting way, um, which kind of makes it a lot of fun. Um, so the uh, its mate is coming along quite nicely. We'll take a look at that here in a little bit. Um, last weekend, I did do some dyeing. Um, which will eventually be an episode of Great Scott, Great Scott Knitting Dyes Yarn, but it is not yet. Um, so I have 
two skeins of yarn. One is 100% Superwash BFL. Don't know if you can really kind of catch the colors, but it's sort of a pinkish purple with some um, deep red and orange or deep red and yellow and green uh, speckles on it. Um, it was based on a inspiration photo from a girl and her world uh, a girl and her wool um, vlog on YouTube. And so I tried my hand at using food coloring to dye up a couple of skeins of yarn. But I wanted to sort of see the difference between 100% Superwash BFL and the 7525 Superwash Merino nylon blend to see how differently they took the exact same dye process. Um, and they do have some tonal differences. This one took the reds a little bit more. So it has a bit more pinkish hues to it. And then this one took the blues. And uh, so it looks a bit more bluish purple. Although there's a lot of pink in it. It doesn't really play as well on camera. But um, so yeah. So I dyed these up last weekend. And you can see some of the speckles in there a little bit. Um, it didn't, again, as, as, as often happens for me, I didn't like them to begin with, but they have grown on me. Um, they are very, they're similar, but very different skeins. So um, these will be one skein projects, possibly socks, possibly a shawl, um, don't know, but I like them both, but they are very differently colored and shaded. Um, even though they were in the exact same dye pot and had the exact same dye, um, applied to them. So those will be a video where you can see sort of my process around those beauties. And so that's pretty much it. Um, so let's talk about what's on the needles. Uh, so my whips, my works in progress. Um, let's see, where will we start? Let's start with that sock. Hey, new project bag. Um, I'll talk a little bit about more about this in acquisition, talking about acquisitions, but this is my new project bag from, uh, 31 it was gifted to me by a lovely lovely benefactor who gave, gifted me a whole bunch of stuff you can sort of see it over my shoulder um but this is a little zipper bag a little canvas zipper bag i really love it and it is currently housing my second sock so yeah so oh i have a Stitch trying to get away from me. Um, so uh, the pattern that I use for my socks is really the um, the recipe from. Uh, let me see if I can find that. Where did it go? Oh yeah, here it is. So it's the sock Matician's toe ups recipe pattern by Nathan Taylor. That's what I am working on. That's how I knit my socks, it's plain vanilla. Um, so yeah, again, I like how it's pooling. So it's very, very nice and interesting the way that's coming together. Um, so yes, oh, uh, this yarn is um, my 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon Sock Yarn that I love to dye. Um, so yeah, there's that. Then there is, what is this one? Oh yes. So there's my Saxon braid scarf. 
which is still coming along. I am not finished with it yet, but it is still cruising along. I have another repeat of it completed, or actually probably I think two since I last blogged. So it's just cruising right along. I just love the cable pattern. It's just so pretty. I love intricate cable patterns like this, but they are a pain in the ass to do because um, it takes so long. You can't just sit and knit. You actually have to kind of pay attention to what you're doing. Um, but that's coming along. I haven't done anything, actually. I haven't knit on it in probably about a week. Um, so a couple weeks back, I did um, get some knitting done on that. Um, oh, that is the double Saxon braided scarf or Saxon double braided scarf by Nicole Wilson. And I'm using my Knitology worsted merino in the colorway of concrete jungle. And then I'm also working on my uh, blanket. And that pattern I'm referring to as I knit it is the Grandma Birdie's baby blanket. But the extent to which I am referring to it is only for the stitch pattern, not for the entire blanket pattern. And so let me get rid of that. So here is my progress so far. About all almost done with my first skein of the uh, Karen Big Cakes in the colorway of Nightberry. Um, these are, I think they're 150 grams. Nope, they're 300 grams gains of worsted weight acrylic, which is really quite nice. I have one more skein of that, which will about double the length of this. So it'll be kind of square-ish. It'll be a good lap blanket. Um, but um, I did get some progress done on this this past week, um, which I hadn't actually done much on it uh, three or four weeks prior to that. Probably been about a month since I worked on that one. So that one's coming along. I like how it's turning out. I love that stitch pattern of because um, it, it seems very 3D. And the beauty of it is it's reversible. It's the exact, I mean, it's the generally the same look on the on the flip side as it is on the main side. So I'm really liking that. Um, so yesterday. Okay, so I'm going to preface this. I am not a big sweater knitter. I have knit two sweaters in my life. One was a pullover that I did using the Elizabeth Zimmerman um, calculations to, to do it. It turned out nicely. It was an acrylic weight yarn. I did not like the neck. I did not execute that very well. I wear the sweater, but mm, it's, it's a little wonky. Um, my second sweater was a cardigan, which was extremely ribbed. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go find it. One moment. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And I found it. So here is this cardigan that I knit. God, this is probably five, six years ago. And I designed this knit pattern kind of all by my lonesome. It's repeated all the way around and down the sleeves. Um, now, here's the fun part. I mean, it's it's a big, roomy, 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 huge cardigan, but, you know, the sleeves are this much too long. And um, here's where it's really bad. It's the, the buttonholes and the buttons. This, they, yeah, they don't work. So it has buttons on it, but it doesn't button. It doesn't. 
Um, the neckline's not quite what it should be, uh, but when I was working in a cold office, this was really lovely because, <laughs> you know, the, the sleeves, you know, I pull them up, they're all bulky, they, you know, it's an ill-fitting cardigan, but you know what, it did the job. And actually, I really, I haven't looked at this knit, this cable pattern in forever. I really liked it. I still do. Um, that being said, I have not knit a sweater since this of any kind. And so last spring, I thought, you know what? I'm out of work. I might as well knit a sweater. I have some, a, you know, a, probably a sweater's quantity of yarn sitting in my, uh, in my stash. Wool, actually, real 100% wool. Um, so I cast on the Tin Can Knits, or, or yeah, Tin Can Knits Flax Sweater, thinking, oh, this will be easy. I'll be able to learn something and, you know, get the pullover. About, man, I was ready to cast on sleeves and was like, I don't like it. I don't like how it's going. I don't like what I'm doing with it. Um, so I set it aside. Took it off the needles. It was just hanging. Um, I hadn't frogged it yet. I frogged it this week and cast it on again um, with some changes. So the original one I did was in navy and just plain navy. And so this one I have cast on. I am probably three quarters of the way through the yoke and I am striping it just for fun, just because I can. Um, so it is being striped with the navy and um, a colorway called mercury. This is Patton's classic wool. So it's woolly wool. It's scratchy wool. I'm actually, it's not that, you know, I've got to I amend that. It's really not that bad. It's not that scratchy. Um, but it's very woolly. Um, I think when it blocks out, it's going to, it's going to block out very nicely. Right now it seems a bit tight. My gauge swatch on that actually did one, actually did a full on gauge swatch, surprisingly enough. Not big on gauge swatching. So, but there it is. Well, I mean, I don't knit sweaters, so why? This is my, my really, other than socks, this is my first. I did a, sort of a gauge swatch when I started with socks. Um, this is my first true fitted garment that I really care about because I clearly didn't swatch on this one. But, so here. I'm liking how it's going so far. Um, this is a day's worth of work because... I started it late last night and knit until about two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and oddly enough, as good as their patterns are written, I screwed it up and I had to had to rip it out and start fresh. So it was like two hours worth of work that I had to stop. And so that's probably why I was up till two o'clock in the morning knitting on the flax sweater. So that has started. I I I am committed to finishing the sweater. I'm committed to how that's going to turn out. I think it's looking really cool. I love the subtle striping of it. Um, so I, that's, that's the cool thing. Um, so yeah, those are the things that I had on my needles. Um, haven't finished a lot, but you know, that's okay. Ooh, this is getting really warm. For all the coldness outside, it is nice and toasty in here. Okay. Um, so what am I planning on casting on? Last time I talked about casting on the, my new pattern that I had sort of finished playing with and was getting ready to publish and write up, which is the marking time shawl. Um, which is right here. I did write it up 
it is over on Ravelry. <laughs> I've got to remember which direction I'm pointing. It is on Ravelry um, as the Marking Time Shawl by Gray Scott Knitting. Um, it's a single skein shawl um, that I knit up using a, um, a skein of single ply fingering weight yarn that I had. Now, if I'd had two, I'd have continued this puppy, but I only had one. And I have another skein of the single ply, and I'm planning on knitting that bad boy with this. Um, again, this is a, a skein of yarn that I dyed myself. This was uh, mason jar dyeing, if I remember correctly. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing how this colorway works up. And so that will be my cast on soon. Oops, showing things that out of turn. Um, yeah, so that's what the, that's what I'm planning. Um, I did publish also the rose hips cowl. Um, yeah. So I published my rose hips cowl pattern. Um, so it looks like this. It's just a, a textured cowl. So there's not a lot of, I mean, the, the texture is really more, I mean, it is interesting and you can tell that it's there, but you really can't tell the details of it, mainly because of the kind of yarn that I knitted in. And this is a, um, a Patton's uh, classic worsted that I dyed myself. Um, so I bought their sort of general colored or general yarn and, and dyed it up myself. All right. So that pattern is out there as well. And um, of course, I also have my checkerboard cowl out there for you to check out. Um, no longer have a special running on that. Um, and for this month, I'm not going to have any, any coupon codes to any of my paid for patterns. I do have some free patterns out there, uh, on Ravelry. So you could, should go check those out to see if there's any there that you might like. Um, yeah. All right. So let's talk about acquisitions. Um, earlier this week, Wednesday, this past Wednesday, I received in the mail, not actually not in the mail, I received from UPS a box of yarn from a person who watches this channel and um, wanted to gift me um, some yarn from their stash. So they did. And this bad boy back here, this big, huge, giant box is the yarn that was gifted to me. So it is just chock full of yarn. Um, yeah, hang on a second. Let me show you sort of just in kind of a, in general. some of the yarn that came from this. So all this, all this yarn, and this is just, just, this isn't all of, I, this is most of it. Um, and a lot of it was multiple skeins of, of those, some of that yarn. So um, I'm just going to highlight a couple things that I got. So I have like 10 skeins, eight of one color and two of another of the Louisa Harding Amatola yarn. This yarn is gorgeous. 
and it's 80% wool, 20% silk. So soft. Oh my God. And so shiny. So just absolutely lustrous. Um, this, this colorway is 107. This colorway is 108. I know they have names, but on the ball band, that's all. They just have a number. Um, but this one has this bluish teal purple, um, some of the, the reason I know there's purple in it is because from the same dye lot, there's there's this lovely one. So these two are, are from the same dye lot. So there's probably some purple deep in here. But anyway, gorgeous, gorgeous. I can't see. I cannot wait to use these in something. These are so beautiful, and so thought and squishy. Um. What else? Oh, another example of of stuff is um, the Universal Yarns Classic Shades um, with this lovely marled um, acrylic yarn, but gorgeous color. Oh my God, it's just absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at that. That's just beautiful. And like, 10 skeins of this. These are all, um, I'll just make sure these are, well, yeah, these are each 100 gram skeins and I have 10 of them. Gorgeous. Okay, anyway, I could, I could continue going through the box yet again, um, but I want to highlight a couple of things that I got. Okay, so he, my benefactor, sent me several skeins of this hand-spun woolen yarn. And I would say it's probably woolen. I would say it's very close to woolen spun um not so much a worsted although this might be worsted this might be worse than these other two are woolen i don't know they're gorgeous they're absolutely wonderful they're so woolly i mean you can just you can just see it look at that look at that gorgeousness so um the story behind these puppies is that it's hand spun yarn, 100% wool, that he, this person is a, has gotten from this little village in Russia where they shear the wool, wash it in the river, dry the wool fleece on the rocks. Then it goes to the women in the village who then hand spin it. Um, they normally do not sell this to people outside the village or outside their environment. Um, but this person had some friends in this village that live in this village who are able to get it for him about twice a year. Um, these are 300 gram skeins of yarn. Um, so this lovely blue very denim -y looking blue is, um, I would call this a lace weight yarn. I have two skeins of this. I'm thinking of holding it double and doing some fingering weight types of things with this. Um, I have a couple of skeins of this really gorgeous gray, which um, I would say this is probably a DK more maybe a sport weight. Um, that would be sort of my guess. I did some wraps per inch, but oh, I'm not, not saying, I'm not going to say that I know how to do that very well. Um, this is definitely a fingering weight in this black. It's just, oh, I just, I can't get over it. And then this beautiful marled, this absolutely gorgeous marled 
is probably I'm going to call it somewhere b between DK and Sport. But just gorgeous. A couple of skeins of that. And then there's a, a skein of um, just natural, which is sort of that DK sporty weight. Um, there we go. Kind of, kind of get the idea of it. But uh, just uh, like these blow me away. These blow me away. These are just so pretty. Look at those. Wow. Wow. I'm just, I can't tell you. I just can't. Those are just so cool. Um, and then, of course, in that lovely, gorgeous, huge box filled with all sorts of yarn was tucked away this little bad boy. Um, this is a bag by 31. Um, their website is, uh, of course, I do not remember off the top of my head. So I'll look on the bag, on the tag on the inside. It is um, 31gifts.com. And this little bicycle, it's this gray canvas bag um, with a little zipper on top. Great for socks. Um, or any, or maybe a small shawl, but yeah, wasn't expecting that at all. Um, actually, I wasn't expecting the amount and the quality and the beauty of the yarn that this person sent me. So, um, again, one more time, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, your generosity is enormous, um, and it will all go to very good use. Um, so yeah, though, <laughs> that's my acquisitions. Um, don't know if I'm going to need to ever acquire again for a couple months. I will as soon as I get paid, but <laughs> I don't have to now. I don't feel like I, it's burning a hole in me not to. Um, okay, so what else am I up to? What else is going on in the world? Um, I haven't been doing a lot of TV watching. Um, did did watch a recent episode, the most recent episode of Call Me Cat. Still absolutely hysterical. Um, I still recommend it. Um, the other night, because some of our premium streaming channels are going away for just a little bit, uh, the family watched Boys in the Band. Um, I had seen the original years and years and years ago. Um, I remember how campy it was. It was sort of the quintessential camp uh, film uh, depicting the 60s and early 70s. Um, I had forgotten how dark the story was. Um, this one certainly reminded me. The acting was superb. Costumes were great. Um, it, 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 you should see it. If you haven't seen the boys in the band, you should see it with this cast. They are phenomenal. Um, so yeah, very cool. Have done some reading. I finally started reading again. Yay. Um, but interestingly enough, I have started reading a book that I listened to on tape, um, or not on tape, but digitally. Um, it is the Caves of Steel by Isaac Asimov. Um, I kind of characterize, would characterize this story as a buddy detective story. I mean, it's definitely a detective story, um, but it's this little buddy detective story, um, where your main, pro main protagonist is a human, uh, in the future detective, who is called on to solve a murder mystery and his he is assigned a partner that is a robot um and this is in in this uh universe uh robots are starting to become very human-like and are re starting to replace a lot of humans in the workplace 
And so it's kind of um, playing on that industrialization and mechanization of, of work that used to be done by human beings, which seems to be a pervasive fear and um, anxiety as we, even today, where a lot of jobs can easily now be um, performed by computer programs, um, things that used to be done by human beings. Um, very repetitive, um, rote, easily, easily programmed activities that in some ways are taking jobs away from human beings. Um, meaning that human beings are going to have to change what they do. Um, that's why I teach, because I'm constantly learning and I'm constantly having to teach. Now, I kind of alluded to my work. I do do corporate education. I do corporate teaching. So leadership development, um, soft skills, as well as technical uh, teaching people how to use computer programs and computer systems. So that's the general area that I do work in. Um, and I'm going to be continuing that work now. Thank, thank the maker. Thank God. Thank everybody um, for your prayers, for your thoughts, and soon to be an income, which is very good. Anyway, um, I always keep pointing the wrong direction. Um, Asimov's Caves of Steel, which is the first in a series, I think of three novels he wrote around these characters. Um, so I am enjoying reading the words on the page. Well, electronic page, not paper page, but an electronic page. I'm enjoying reading that. Um, so actually, I wish it was a book. It'd be a bit, a little bit easier uh, if I actually had a hardbound book. I love books. Um, I just haven't been into books lately. Lately, So this is my foray back into the book world. Um, yeah. Anything else? Nope, that's pretty much it. All right, so let's talk now about yarn. So it's yarn time. So last, uh, a couple weeks back, we talked about the single ply yarn and all of its lovely attributes. Well, um, now we're going to move that forward and talk about multiple plies, which is really just taking single ply and putting it with other single plies and twisting them together to make multiple plied yarns. But... Um, there are some different characteristics that we can talk about. Um, so, you know, here's that concept of that single ply yarn. It's formed by taking fibers and twisting them under tension into a continuous thread. And then multiple ply is simply taking these and putting together with other single plies. So let's talk about the two ply yarn, where you simply have two single plies twisted together. Um, it One of the aspects about a single ply yarn is that it can be what is called out of balance. So that means that when you knit it up, the twist, the energy in that twist of the yarn can cause your knitting to skew um, into an angle because it's gonna, the twist is gonna pull it in a particular direction. With two-ply yarn, that helps to balance that out and keep that from happening. Um, that introduction of another strand of fiber also makes the yarn stronger. Single-ply has a tendency to break. Two-ply doesn't as easily. Um, and um, some other sort of important kind of characteristic things is your smoother yarns like your alpacas, your merinos, your short fibers um, are strengthened by multiple plies. 
and so plying them together gives them more strength and, and uh, energy. Some of the basic visual effects of your two-ply yarn is when you look at a cross-section of the yarn, it's actually not round. Your two-ply yarn will not be round. It's going to be oblong because you have your two round plies sitting next to each other. Now, they may be twisted on each other, but the yarn itself, if you just cut it and look at it um, in a cross-section, the shape is oblong as opposed to round. Now what this will do is it helps create a more textured knitting fabric, a more textured surface to that knitting fabric. It can also allow, it, it, it automatically sort of uh, opens up that yarn. When you knit it, there's going to be the potential of more gaps in the yarn, which makes it a really good choice for knitting lace. It accentuates that openness that the yarn um, naturally will give you. Um, so, you know, that's why I have an example of some lace knitting here with two ply yarn. It, it just naturally has, has that openness to it. Three ply yarn, you're getting closer to this rounded nature. Um, sort of like Three legs on a stool makes a stool stable. Um, three, le three plies in a yarn helps, gives you a good balance, stability, and strength. Um, because of that strength, it is, is uh, resistant to abrasion. So it's really good for socks and mittens or other high use uh, garments or, or products. Um, because it is three plies, it has a much more rounded nature, so it's more full. And so you have fewer gaps, you're gonna have a, a better structure. Um, when you're talking about woolen spun yarns that are plied, three ply is about as high as you can go with a woolen spun yarn to maintain that woolen nature. Um, you go beyond that and it starts, because of the nature of having to do the twist, you're moving away from woolen spun into more of a worsted feel. Also, the more plies you have, um, yes, it gives you that more stability, but it also creates a denser fabric, a denser yarn. Um, three ply yarn, really good for if you're working in woolen spun, um, it creates that a really nice mellow color work. So you, instead of having sharp lines, you have sort of a blended uh, lines in your color work. Um, so it makes it a very soft color work option. Um, it's also really good for cables and textured stitches, as you can see in this example. Now four ply and beyond. Now you can go four, five, six, eight, you know, you can just continue adding additional strands of yarn um, to create, again, hard wearing, strong yarn. Now, when you look at a cross section of four ply yarn, it's gonna look more like a box because you have four different plies. So it's not, particularly round it's very square looking um, this denser structure makes it really good for Aaron and Guernsey patterns also good for crisp color work as you can see in this pair of mittens um, tends to be worsted spun um, in terms of your spinning And of course, you can continue going up higher and higher in your types of uh, in, in your additional uh, plies that you can have in yarn. Now, uh, one must be careful that the number of plies in your yarn doesn't necessarily affect the weight of the yarn. Uh, you can have a four ply fingering weight yarn um, just as well as you can have a single ply worsted weight. So don't, even though in some parts of the world, they will talk about four ply yarn and really mean 
like a sock yarn. Whereas, um, yeah, they'll also talk about, you know, worsted and, the, you know, it's like worsted spun does not mean worsted weight. It means how it was how it was created. So it's these terms that can often get very confusing um, when you're first entering into this yarn world. Um, so, yeah. Now there are other types of, of yarn structure and yarn construction. Um, I have seen um, a, a braided construction instead of just standard twist. Uh, you know, it's it looks braided. Um, there's other ones where, I mean, there's just all sorts of, of other types of constructions. Um, so I'm just kind of kind of leave it at these basics um, and not go much, too much deeper into this. So I hope you've kind of enjoyed um, over the past couple of months this discussion about the fiber and yarn and how it's spun and how these plies um, sort of work. Uh, I'm finding that it's it's going to make it a little more interesting for me as I look at patterns and see the type of yarn that was is um, that is suggested and look and because I very very seldom use the suggested yarn, but I'm going to actually start paying a bit more attention at finding a yarn that um has many of the same qualities in terms of how it was spun is it a a uh, woolen spun is it worsted spun is it uh you know single ply two ply four ply ten you know six ply what's the nature of the suggested yarn and choosing a yarn that has a similar nature or make a very very conscious choice to go with a different type of of yarn um so having learned these things has been for me i think going to be very helpful moving forward in making yarn substitutions because i have a better understanding of its structure and its uses um so that's that's where i'm at with that um so cool that brings us to the end of this particular um vlog so i hope you have enjoyed our time together uh, all of a sudden the uh the uh ending song from the carol burnett show just started going through my head <laughs> um i will not sing it for you uh, i might give you a little ear tug though and for those of you who are young and don't know what the heck I'm talking about, look it up. Um, what else? Oh, um, particulars. So you can find me on social media on Facebook. I do have a Facebook page called Great Scott Knitting, where I often post things that I'm working on. Um, I have an Instagram of Great Scott Knitting, where I even post even more of the things that I'm working on. I have a Ravelry on Ravelry. I am great Scott KCMO as in Kansas City, Missouri, but I don't long I no longer live there, but I still have that handle. Uh, so great Scott KCMO. Um, and I also have a Ravelry group page there. So feel free to go check that out. There's not much happening there yet. Um, I'm hoping that as the year goes on, um, I can start creating a bit more stuff that might happen around that page um, but in the meantime uh, feel free to comment let me know how things are going for you um, what's new in your world what are you knitting and casting on uh, what's your favorite bread recipe and all that good stuff so thank you thank you thank you for joining in um, thank you for your well wishes in my life and i am thinking good thoughts and hoping great things for each and every one of you as well. So uh, may you have peace in your home and the fullness of joy for all who dwell there.
Bye.